Oh shit, we missed it on Facebook. All right, what's going on? Might be live on YouTube. Bear with us, everybody, if you're watching. Hang in there. Broadcast is already live. Um, this is no bueno. No bueno. No bueno. During like small meetings where it can be hard. Okay. Keep that mind. Well, you have to tell me more about that. All right, so we're not. Are we live? We, we're, live. We, we're we're like in limbo here. We might be live on YouTube, but Facebook canceled the broadcast. So that's what I'm trying to figure out now. Okay. All right. Watch what we say. Tasty. Hey, Hi, I do not you're, live. You were a little bit muted, Casey. Your sound was a little low. It sounded like. I'm part of the camera. You hear me now? Yeah. So I guess fill this space. If someone is, if you guys are watching on YouTube, grab your rope, your ropes. This all recorded. We're gonna be tying some knot. There you go. <laughs> Looks like we got some comments coming in here. You guys are better off not using Facebook anyways because all they do is send their true patriotic Americans. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Walter. <laughs> Wait for that to happen. <laughs> oh, what is going on? I'm probably in, in just a heads up, guys. This, it, it will it will likely happen within this. I'm lucky to be in here right now. It's probably going to kick me out. Our internet has been flowing. I tried to do hotspot. It's just not rolling real good. So. Looks like the broadcast was deleted on Facebook. Try creating a new broadcast or just remove this destination from the broadcast and re-edit. All right, remove. Let's see if this... This is fun. Learning on the fly. Here we go, here we go, here we go. All right. Hey, guys, if you're good with it, I can start working on some of this vocabulary stuff I was going to talk about while you are messing with it. All right, let's... Uh, I, think, I think we're live on both now. The Facebook link probably doesn't work if people click that, but we should be ready to roll here. Uh, ground rules for anybody watching on Facebook. Just got the notification that we are live on Facebook. So if anybody's watching on our website, wazoosurvivalgear.com, there is a little chat bubble down there at the bottom. That does not work for this live broadcast. If you want to interact with us here, you've got to be using comments on YouTube or the comments directly on Facebook. We can monitor all of those here. Um, we have got some comments rolling in already. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks for you guys that are watching and commenting. We know you're here. And this week's broadcast is brought to you by Wazoo Survival Gear and George Bushcraft with our presenter back for the second time, Craig Cobb. If you don't know who he is, go back and watch the first one. But he is uh, owner, operator, proprietor, survival extraordinaire of nature reliance school and he is a certified not nut and he's going to teach <laughs> us his top five need to know not for the outdoors so craig this is you heads up we might have some more technical difficulties so bear with us through that take away craig all right guys and gals thanks for joining us again here on the live broadcast love technology how about you guys so <laughs> wow but we're gonna work through it uh, we're all woodsmen and like being outdoors anyway, so we're okay with making a few uh, errors here and there and glad you're uh, gracious and patient with us. So the guys from Wazoo, George Bushcraft, asked me to come on and talk about knots. Uh, been having a lot of, this is kind of some inside information. I think you all find this pretty funny, but uh, I've got a video on YouTube that's gone viral in the last week, two weeks, and has picked up about 400,000 views. Wow. And um, that's that's not the norm for me <laughs> by a long stretch, but uh, it's kind of interesting how the Internet world works due to the bubble Wallace mess. That video has gone insane. Absolutely insane. I don't so, even know what you're talking about right now, but I think we okay. have one video that's reached that status. 
All right, so this this video as a whole has got like 2.5 million views on it now. Ooh. And it's, hey, trust me, it's the only one that's done that well. I wish they would all do that well. But but anyway, the whole story with uh, Bubba Wallace, you don't know what that is, Nick? You haven't heard no, of it? No, I, I live in a cave. Dude, man. You I, do, I, man. I try to avoid media. It just makes me depressed. And I, anything okay. I news, I just a, want to go play in the woods instead. The garage, the garage pole. The garage pole. So anyway, I'll tell you, Nick, I'll just brief for anybody else that doesn't uh, live in a home and actually lives in a cave like Nick somewhere. Basically, what we got going on is that uh, Bubba Wallace, a NASCAR driver, um, or maybe his team suggested there was a noose that was tied on a, in his garage. Um, Bubba Wallace is an African-American. And, and so it, it came out later that it wasn't a noose in the very end. But. Because of that, YouTube put my video on their explore page. I have a video called the top five, top five knots for camping, hunting, survival, and it's gone crazy. It's absolutely gone insane. So with that said, I have been not wow. heavy for a week answering questions and handling trolls the way Craig Cottle handles trolls. So that's, that's the way, that's the way we've been handling it. With that said, Oh man, I've had a lot to do with knots and I've had a lot of people moan and groan about my choices for the top five knots. So I've adjusted a little bit here to make some people happy, but uh, here's what we're going to do. I, I recorded some video of me tying five different knots and just, oh my gosh, you all, please bear with me and be okay with the fact that they may not be your top five knots, but for me, they are five of what I consider the simplest knots that I use most often. And so that's what I want to share. And I make a play at the end of the last video. So these guys will have me come back and we'll do it again. We'll tie another five and maybe we'll get your five <laughs> when we come back. So with that said, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play some videos. We tried this a little bit earlier. We may have some issue with audio, but we're going to try something and see how it goes. Hey, so let's, let's, let's do this too. So anybody ready? watching, uh, before Craig gets into his, go ahead and leave in the comments your top five knots. If you have Come on, man. Knots that you know, and only five, how... which ones would you live by? So go ahead and leave that down there. Craig, let's get into it. All right. So I'm going to share screen, guys. Hi. Can y'all see what's going on now? See my files here? Yep. Good All right. So, yeah, I lost Nick. He muted his. He muted his I'm microphone. Muted myself. So, uh, you have you're sharing your whole screen right now. Yeah. Can you see it? This is opening. So go ahead and open one of them, because I think you'll have to stop this share screen. So go ahead and pause that real quick. Um, stop this share screen now that it's open, and now try and share your screen again. And. Okay. There's the three options at the top. Go to the far right one that says Chrome tab. No, cancel. Okay. As soon as you click share screen, yeah. there's a little pop up window. And there's three options there it defaults to your entire screen. There's two other options for application window or Chrome tab. So you want to try and do the Chrome tab and then select that actual tab or nothing. file in it. Okay. Mm. Let me do it again then. I had it pulled up in a Chrome tab already, Nick. And you should be able to find it then under that Chrome tab option. It should be one of those laid out there. Just kind of list them out in text format. It's a little bit ugly. But there is a little checkbox at the bottom of Chrome tab that allows you to share audio. I think that's what we were missing earlier. Yeah, I'm not seeing that, man. And I apologize that I can't see that. Uh, go ahead and share your entire screen, and let's let's see what. Okay. So way to get the audio. So you're there. Here's my screen. All right. So open your file here in one of the Chrome tabs, the Control O. Did that work? It didn't work. No. I'm not getting it. Uh, go back into Chrome. Okay. 
Control O. There it is. All right, so select one of those. Yeah. All right. Then go ahead and, and yeah, double click it and then just pause it there and leave it. Oops. Crap. Well, you would think I didn't know how to use a computer. Uh, I do. <laughs> I don't know how to use Windows, so this is all new for me. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Gosh, why aren't you a Mac person, Craig? Oh my gosh, uh, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> hey, listen up, boys and girls. I can go out in the woods right now in my shorts and make it for 30 days, y'all. So give me a break on this technology. <laughs> I bet you make, I, I bet you make it for 60. Come, come at me, bro. Okay. Come at me, bro. You can do it. All right, can you come see my me, screen now? I can. Yep. Do your, do your control O. Double click. Yep. Okay. There we go. Hit the pause. So now leave that exactly where it is. Don't do anything else with that. Okay. Uh, now go back to your, where's your stream yard? Or if you have the option to stop sharing your screen. Okay. okay. So now if you click share screen again, that in that pop up there, what are you seeing? I'm seeing the option to do screen one or screen two. Oh, and share oh, audio, oh, the check box. Screens. Uh, so select whichever one I guess your your thingy's on. I and see the share audio checkbox now. Okay, cool. And then so see if you can find that that tab you have open there in the list. Click the share audio, and we should be golden. Okay. Are you all seeing my screen? I, screen. I see your whole screen. On, I don't. If this doesn't work, you'll just have to dub over it. Okay. Can you all see it now? You can see it. It looks like it's sharing your entire screen. Oh, yeah. Now, we'll see if it shares the audio. Okay. I'm going to hit play and see what it does. All right. Hey, everybody. Craig Cuddle, director. Hey. hey. We're going to be real informal today. Thanks for joining me. For I hear you. Hey, um, it works. is a hitch. It's one of my most favorite hitches in the world. I use it all the time. You got any volume control that might be able to get louder? Working or the running end of the rope. If you don't know what that is, we'll talk about that in the discussion. Take it under, down through that hole, pull these apart. You always do these in two. Take this under, down through the hole, pull that apart. Then you can cinch this up. Very useful in our discussion. I'll tell you how to use it. But real quick, let me show you something else that you can do with this. Instead of just going around your post or your tree once, let's go around twice, make a wrap around. Anytime you make a wrap around, it creates friction that holds this to your piece that you're tying to, under down through the hole, under down through the hole. Cinch that up. Now, as you can see, when I pull, it pulls tension on this portion, which is the wrap around, and helps secure everything to our post. But we'll talk about this in our discussion. All right, how did that work, guys? That's good. Okay, cool. Yay. Thanks for your patience, everybody. The question is, can we successfully do that again? Yeah, we'll see. Good, <laughs> gravy. All right, so let me chat Let me chat about what I just did there then, uh, because these are really common, and uh, I use this knot, and I get a lot of grief over this one, and it's it's just two half hitches. And a lot of people use two half hitches as a safety on a lot of different knots, but half hitches and, and well, any hitches for that matter. And that's probably a worthy discussion. What's the difference between a hitch and a knot? A hitch is something that requires you to tie it to something else, whereas a knot can exist on its own. And so that hitch has to be tied to, like I did in this video, to a post, or it needs to be tied to a, a hitch on a truck or something of that nature. But the way I use half hitches and have used them nearly as long as I've been old enough to walk is like a homesteading, farming, uh, hunting type half hitch. And, and what I've used it for uh, primarily is anything that I wanted to hang, particularly processing game. If I had a cross piece and I lifted a piece of game, I would tie that half hitch. And that way, when uh, I needed to release it, all I did was pull the slip and it would just fall. And so the half hitch is a really useful tool. Uh, I also used it growing up on the farm over and over and over again to tie loads of anything down. Particularly, I, we uh, we cut a lot of hay here in central Kentucky because we had cattle. So anytime that I would use something to tie a load of hay down, the primary 
hitch that tied it to the wagon or the trailer or whatever it might be was two half hitches. I would tie it to whatever was there. I mean, and it two half hitches and secure it and it was good to go. I contacted one of my arborist friends today, and this this is a guy who utilizes knots all day, every day, uh, climbing up trees, cutting trees, cutting trees down. And one of the things that he uses half hitches for is a security on the end of a clove hitch, which I'm going to show a little bit later, as a secure way to uh, attach a line to a tree. And then if he cuts that tree and it falls, then it's securely tied to the line. And he would use half hitches to do that. And he also used what I just described there as being a wraparound. You do a wraparound around the tree, tie your, or the post or whatever it is that you're tying to, then tie your half hitches off. And it's not a life-saving knot. It's not a secure knot such that I would tie a human off to it. But it is one of those things that even somebody like an arborist utilizes basically on a daily basis for safety and, and uh, make sure he's got what will what work. Craig, let me know if I'm getting ahead of you on this one or if this is the wrong time for terminology, but you call it a wraparound. Is it synonymous with a round turn? Yeah, yeah. I call it a wraparound, not um, round turn. Same thing, basically. Basically the same exact thing. There's a lot of terminology that gets mixed up, and you might have noticed I just used the word line instead of rope. Rope, this is something that a lot of people don't know. Uh, I, I use this term rope just like everybody else does, but the more technical and accurate wording is that a rope is any type of woven fibers that are in the process of being made or still standing on the spool and have not been utilized yet. That is rope. Once you cut it off of a spool and designate it for a purpose, whether you're cutting paracord that you're going to send out and put on a necklace, whether you're cutting cordage uh, rope, cremantal sheath rope like I have here for utilizing in shelter building or whatever, that's when it becomes a line. It's no longer a rope. And so the proper terminology would be line versus rope there. But, you know, it's kind of like, cord. it's kind of like more, more people use the term rope or cordage or whatever. So I just go with what works best because if I don't, people will eat me alive on YouTube. So well, if you're ever on a boat, they'll throw you overboard when you say the word rope. Oh man, dude, it's insane. The people on this video, because again, again, I've got I've gotten like 300,000 views, 200,000. I don't know what it's been like this week, but it's, uh, I had to walk away from it. So it's, it's people go crazy, crazy over their knots. Okay. Well, speaking of, we've got uh, somebody that participated here in their top five. So Todd Gibson, Todd Gibson, Todd Gibson's is one of my favorite people in the world. <laughs> He truly is. Uh, he's got put the, top five knots. Trucker's hitch, which I'm not going to do today because uh, here's what I wanted to do. I want to do these real five simple ones, and then you guys got to have me back. And then uh, I'm going to do some of these because the trucker's hitch is another one that Todd's recommended that I use a lot. Prusik is another one, or Prusik is another one that I use a lot. Double Fisherman is another one I use a lot. But I'm not doing those tonight, Todd. I am doing a bowling. So, so you said you changed some stuff from a video that you did recently, right? Yeah. So in, in that video, what were your top five there? Um, man, I haven't even watched that video to know, but I do know here, here, here's the gist of what everybody got upset about in my top five knots. I did not include a bowling. Uh -huh. And the reason I did not include a bowling is because I had already made a separate video called king of knots, the bowline or the bowline. And so it was standing on its own over there. And so I included these and this is a video and the crazy thing guys, and you all, will, I think you all can appreciate this. Everybody listening and you guys is that this is a video that sucks. I made this video years ago, like six, seven years ago. And the videography is terrible. My presentation is terrible. And so all these people are coming to nature blind school going, Hey, this guy sucks or this guy's great or whatever. I mean, it's just, it runs. I'm getting a whole lot more. Hey, this guy's great than I am. This guy sucks. But I've got like 40 other videos after those, after that particular video that are like, you know, a lot better. But anyway, that's what about I'm doing. Not. Yeah, about not, I do all kinds of knots on Instagram. I hope so that we could just purposely like get some virality if we just pick five really obnoxious knots and say, there you go. Five. And, 
<laughs> you know, thumb, thumb downs count just as well as thumbs up on YouTube. So maybe I'll do that. The five greatest knots of all time. And then I'll just make some up. <laughs> make that puppy go viral. There we go. Thanks for the idea. Thank you. All right. So are we getting off track here? Is it, do you have a whole plan with this, Craig? I feel like we're in a weird, we're going in a weird direction here. Listen, about do, you, do you have a problem with me talking to Nick? <laughs> I think so. Well, I thought this was a five knot video. <laughs> okay, hang on. Okay, I'll get to it. That's we got an chill. hour, bro. Chill, we got an son. hour, bro. All right, let no, me get I, to the next no, one. So. Actually, in my own personal, I, I have to go to this other class thing in uh, less than less than thirty minutes. So I do have like my own self interest of trying to get get as much Craigisms as I can. Okay, let me get let me get another one up for Dustin then. Golly, I tell you what, it's so hard being Healthy. good. Man. All right. This new technical way of pulling these up is weird for me. Learning, learning something, Craig. Yeah, man. Y'all make me better. That's for sure. So we just did, um, we, we, uh, we kind of did a, uh, was that two round turns? Is that one round turn and two half hitches? That was just one round turn that I did. One full round turn and then two half hitches. Right. Post. All right. Number two, you ready, Dustin? Yes, sir. Hit me. I want you. I want your full attention. Can y'all hear that? Nope. We don't have the audio again. Mm. Was it playing? Good chance for everybody to practice or not. There you no, go. Talk about it. Hold on. Not a knot. Here we go. I think I've got it. All right. I'm going to push the button. Here we go. All right. So I have a great story about this one. It's called the pile hitch knot. Uh, I'll tell you that in the Ooh. But you just take a loop, wrap it around the structure, Ooh. take it under, and take that loop up and over your structure here. Son of a gun. Look at that. So it's that simple, but I got a good story to go along with this one and a lot of good uses too. All right, I'm back. Could y'all see and hear that one? All right, cool. We're yeah. There. All right, so the pile hitch, as you can tell, is probably one of the simplest things that I'm going to show here tonight. Very, very simple. And the the one of the the reason I wanted to show it is because it is a it is connector to a a pole, a structure, a tree, or whatever that you can do in the middle of a rope. And so you can see, all I did was wrap around. And then just slide it over the top. You could do that over top of a pack. You could do that over top of a um, a pipe. You could do that on any number of things where you can just wrap it around something and then lay it over the top. It's that simple. So uh, from my perspective, this is a good one to just quickly and easily tie something off. Like let's say I'm going to drag something to an ATV or a tractor. Like I did this the other day. I used this exact this exact pile hitch to attach to a to a limb, I buried my ATV on the back of, in the back of the woods, and I just pulled the tractor up, attached the pile hitch to the tree that it was stuck on, and then just pulled it out from underneath the ATV. Uh, real simple. Uh, it pull once you start pulling on it, it, puts tension on it, and as soon as you release, there's absolutely no tension. There's actually nothing tied together. Again, it's a hitch. It requires what it's being attached to to be able to work. And so once that tension is released then i just literally pull it off i could pull it off with a finger it's that simple so do you prefer that over a timber hitch i use both it's just that is so much simpler if i can get to if i can get to the apparatus that i'm tying to then i'll use if and i need it to be more secure then i'm gonna use a timber hitch i always tie a timber hitch and then i use half hitches on the end of the timber hitch to secure it and so, with your example of recovering the atv i mean you're taking a bite and you're you're wrapping that around the thing. So do both of the other ends of the line go to your ATV? So it, it's like a closed loop the whole way. No, there's only one line going out to the ATV, and then I use I use my actually it's a bite around whatever. In this particular case, I wasn't actually extracting the ATV. The ATV was sitting on top of a log, and it was wobbled on top of the log, right? And so I just took a loop in the middle of the rope, wrapped it around that log and then took it over the end of the log. And then when I pulled it out with the tractor and that's all there was to it. Okay. Uh, and then it just, you know, it's completely loose. I could tie it a timber hitch. It's just, it, yeah. 
so in that in that example, your your bite, I guess you said the bite was in the middle. So yeah, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have the little tail end hanging anywhere. Okay. Correct. Correct. Gotcha. And that's the beauty of it is you can use it right in the middle of a rope. Timber hitch requires you to use the end of your line rather than the middle. And so I just, I mean, it's just one of those things I actually didn't think about until you all asked me to do this. I had the rope laying there and I was in the middle of the rope. So I just tied the middle of the rope. If I had the end, I probably would have tied a timber hitch. Yeah. But it's just where I happened to be. So yeah, that's what I did. Oh, that's cool. That's a new one for me. I hadn't seen that one. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Cool. And the funny story, not to get too far into business again, but that, that knot right there or that hitch has been stolen from me and put on more Instagram pages than anything I've ever done. It's got, it's got another million views or something. And the crappy thing is, is that they took a landscape portrait video that I did on YouTube and cut it in half to get the square. And so my name gets cut off and nature line school gets cut up and all that good stuff. But nevertheless, but that, that's not one that you invented though, right? That's just, no, 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 no. I haven't been, man. It's like most things. I think I talked about this last time. I didn't invent any of this. This is just stuff I do that I've learned from other people. Not right, cool. I'm going to go to the, another one. You ready for number three? We lost Dustin. Dude. Yeah. He said his internet's acting up there. Usually that's a Casey thing. Can y'all see my screen? Uh, yeah, it's there it always is. a Casey thing. All um, right, number th number three. Number three. Number three. The king of knots. The bowline or the bowling, depending upon what part of the country you're from, is what you'll call it. Yep, that's pretty much it. I do it again. Don't worry. It's really easy. To tie. <laughs> it's too fast. So you create a loop. Take the working or running end up through that loop around and then back down through that same loop. A lot of people will call this uh, yeah. the rabbit. This is the rabbit. This is the rabbit hole. The rabbit comes out of the hole around the tree and then back down through the hole. Pull that. Then I always tie a safety on here back up, which is an overhand knot, which I was going to do next. Yeah. But this yeah, is yeah. Cool. And we'll discuss why this is such a valuable knot. Yeah. Be valuable not for several uses all right back at you boys that's the bowling could y'all see and hear at that time yeah yeah talk yeah. Two days up late at night trying to invent new knots <laughs> you, uh, you had any any luck with that any breakthroughs who knows about todd who knows what he's doing late at night he's he's a good dude so the bowling guys, uh, for those that are listening in and watching the bowling bowline, and this is another thing that you'll get hammered on on YouTube. If you have a YouTube channel, just be aware is people call it different things. And I don't really care what you call it as long as you can tie it and tie it properly and use it properly. I really don't care. But the point being on this one, the beauty of this knot, which is again, what I have right here, same thing is that this knot doesn't collapse on itself. And you can put this under extreme amounts of pressure and it's going to be incredibly easy to untie. And so for me, the primary use that I use for it too, number one would be my hammock setup. That's what, that's the knots that I have on the end of my hammocks that I tie off to uh, my straps or the hand to the tree itself. And as far as homesteading farming, that's anytime I'm going to pull something like for example, in the, the situation I described before, I used the pile hitch on the log that I was pulling out from the ATV. And then what I attached to the tractor was a bowling because once that pressure gets pulled, then I have a secure knot there, the bowline or the bowling. And then as soon as I get done pulling, I can pull a tree over like that. And it's just going to come loose rather easily. And I can untie that with my hands. So that's, that's what I love about the bowling. That's what most people love about it. Uh, it's a really good rescue knot. You can tie that and wrap it around somebody if you had to pull somebody. Uh, and it's not going to cinch up on their body. And that way, if you had to have even yourself, if you had to lower yourself down a steep embankment, you could tie a bowling around yourself and lower yourself down. It's not going to continue to cinch up on your body and uh, start to hurt you. And I think another thing I've heard about those is that they use up less of your line. 
they take up less material to tie than like a, a figure eight. Yeah, absolutely. They do it very little space and you can make that this space that I have here. I did just so I could hold it up in front of you all and you all can see it rather easily. But this is the same thing I just tied on camera. And one of the things I mentioned on there is I use an overhand knot at the end as a backup. Uh, this used to be for some people what people tied in for mountaineering. That's kind of really gotten out of vogue rather quickly due to um, this can come untied if it doesn't have pressure on it. So with pressure, this rather easily stays untied. But if it's just sitting there and it doesn't have pressure on it, this can come untied. That's why everybody that uses it will at least tie one safety on it. And I'm not a climber. I'm not a mountaineer, so I can't really speak to it. But even I on the farm for dragging stuff, I always tie this, this back up as a means for making sure that if it starts to loosen, it's, it's not going to fall apart on me. Oh man, we just lost Dustin again. He may know this one, but I don't know. Mm. Uh, I know there's different knots have different strength reductions in the room. Two thirds. Bowline is two thirds. Once you, Do you know how that compares to the, the figure eight. I don't know the figure eight. I actually, cause I'm not real keen on that strength. Mm -hmm. on, on knots. Um, and so I did look it up for the bowling right before I got on with you all, but I did not look up the figure eight because I, I knew I wasn't going to tie it. But if anybody knows or, or knows yeah. off the top of your head, share it in the comments with us. But yeah, lay it in there. Plenty of climbing stuff out there and, and rescue stuff. But I think typically they default to the, the figure eight. And I'm guessing it's a strength thing, but don't know uh, for sure. Don't know. I know the guys that I work with because I've worked with a fair amount of first responders. Um, and we actually, yeah, we actually did some stuff with some folks recently and we were talking about that very thing and they, they tie in with a figure eight mm -hmm. and they back it up with a, you know, they back it up with an overhand knot as well. Yeah. Just, you know, just for extra safety. I mean, when you got a human hanging off a rope and they're 200 feet above the ground, you want to make sure that puppy's going to be there. So, yeah. so, uh, you want to get into the next one? Yeah, let's do it. Super simple here. Coming back at you. Forgot to click that share audio again. <laughs> hey, at least we figured that out. Yeah. Took a few minutes, but we got it's, it. pull, it's pulling up right now. It's taking it. Here, number four, super easy, you all. Hey, not number four is an overhand loop. Very useful, very simple. I love simple. So you take your working in and you lay it back against itself. This is what's referred to as a bite. We'll discuss this in a minute as well. This is a loop where it crosses itself. You take that bite and what you're going to do is you're going to wrap this back on itself and up through that hole. Dressing the knot is important. Dressing is just making it look pretty, but actually it's making it more functional. Now this has a lot of uses that will have uh, need to discuss and why if this gets too tight it won't come untied and all that good stuff but we'll make sure we go over that when we talk together yeah i think i'm getting there with the technology guys all righty hey before we get into that awesome. he was doing some sleuthing and found oh, out nice yeah so bolin 70 to 75 percent so that's right at your i, I guess that yeah two-thirds would be about 66 um figure eight 75 to 80 so just barely stronger so interesting yeah the, what i had read this earlier today was two-thirds so that's good stuff thanks mr mcgee for getting that for us i really appreciate that and, and todd was saying he was guessing the retrace is about 80. so yeah that's, that's all right get it bill so it, bill. overhand on a bike right yeah, overhand. Uh, the, re the reason I want to bring this up, because I like to talk about this when we talk about survival and bushcraft trapping, T-R-A-P-P-I-N-G. Uh, I'm not a big fan of utilizing line or cordage, paracord, although we use it to teach people uh, in a class. I'm not a big fan of actually utilizing that in the real world, because nearly every critter that you're going to connect with, with cordage, they're going to chew their way out of it. So the reason I want to show this overhand knob because this is what I used when I was a kid. We, we raised cattle, we raised hogs on the farm 
And at one point in my life, there was a, a lot of wild feral dogs that were getting into our livestock and giving us problems. And my dad said, fix that. <laughs> so uh, he, I was tasked, if you will, to eliminate these feral dogs that were uh, getting into our livestock and, and mainly killing all of our hogs. And the way I did it, because I didn't, I did not have any idea what I was doing. I, I did a lot of trapping with conor bear traps and box traps, but I was a good tracker. Even as a kid, I was, it was a pretty good tracker. So I would track and find where they were going through the fence. And then I took a pair of wire cutters and literally cut a hunk of fence off and created an overhand and sent the wire back through that overhand loop and would sit that right where I knew these dogs were traveling in their travel corridor. And that's how I caught them utilizing wire. And so, you know, it's rather easy to tie any number of different loops and knots on the end of, to create a hole so that you can utilize it basically. But it's a little different animal when you're using wire or you're using some sort of, uh, whether it's fence wire or what have you. And, and so I want to show that because that's a really useful tool to, to be able to do that. That's good to know. That's pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely, man. So that's, that's some real world experience there for you. What do you now when you were doing the wire stuff, this is something that I've seen in, in some of some of the manuals and, and whatnot. So who knows if there's any validity to it, but if you go to do, let's say your overhand, if that was made out of wire, I mean, obviously you'd want it smaller than that, but by adding kind of a, an extra loop in there, yeah, I'm drifting like crazy that you then route through this. So as it pulls tight around the animal, that that'll kind of pinch down on the wire itself too and help kink it and prevent. That's exactly it. what I did. That's okay. exactly what I did. And the reason for that, and, and it's not a trapping class and, and I probably wouldn't be a good choice to do that. But, but basically, Basically, when you capture that animal, they're going to be doing a lot of tugging and pulling. So there's a certain amount of natural inclination for an animal that's trapped to pull off and away from whatever it is that's giving them trouble. But they will make a run at it on occasion, meaning they'll go forward and then pull back. Mm -hmm. And if there's not something that's cinching the wire down on the critter that you're trying to catch, then when they run forward to loosen it up, then it comes off. And so that can be a problem. What you just created is exactly what I learned by trial and error to do when I was tasked to do that as a kid. It's a really useful little aspect of this for sure. All right. You want to get into this last one? Let's do it. Let's create some controversy. Get it. Uh, the controversy know. was the bowline, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you mean the bowline? Bowline. Bowline. Sorry. The balon is balon. I don't care which way you say. It. I just think it's funny that people get so uppity about knots, dude. Great. I'm ready to make some viral day. videos. Let's let's do this, dude. Hey, I'll I will do that with you all if you'll help me promote it. I'll make one of the top five t most terrible knots in the world. I'm okay with <laughs> it. We could do it and do them all wrong. Yes, That's exactly. Top Let me five do that. Hey, knots. actually, number one is the bowlin. That that'll cause an uproar. <laughs> Hey, I'm down. Hey, uh, can you see my screen? Oh, uh, yeah, I got to click the button on my end. That's, that's okay. Cool. Negative Ghost Rider. Oh, there you go. Okay. Hey, not number five. Yeah. Is going to be a clove hitch. Man, knots could go on forever, couldn't they? Uh, I hear nothing. We'll do some more because it, it's just quiet. Oh, hitch. There, there's audio, but it's quiet. We need to tie it here, and then we'll go find it on a tree and utilize it there. So what we do? What? We take there, our that sounds good. footage. We create a loop. There's our loop. Then we create another loop. There's our second loop, and we take that second loop behind the first as we're looking at it. This is our clove hitch. Not useful at all right there, but once we place this over something, and I'll tell you some uses for that in our discussion, then we have a clove hitch. And what's happening is I pull pressure, it's pulling pressure back is on. Is everyone else hearing this or? Secure this by tying it off. Oh, okay. Let's go find a tree and we'll show you the other way of tying it as well. You couldn't hear that, Casey? Nick, mm -hmm. could you hear that one? Yeah, I could hear it. Huh. What the heck? Well, that's probably my crappy internet. Internet. That hey, so, internet years are broken. 
so the clove hitch this is a this is a real uh useful way that we teach it in our survival classes is that you know let's say you set up a, a tarp shelter and that tarp shelter let's, let's say it's a big tarp 10 by 10 20 by 20 it don't really matter yeah. and you'll have a tendency for that to sink in in the middle and hey there's ginger salmon good to see you on here ginger uh haven't heard from you in a while so with that said um basically what we do is we teach our students to take a rock or a small stick or anything that's semi-rigid stick it underneath of the tarp on the side that you're going to be sleeping in and then tie a clove hitch on the opposite side of the tarp that clove hitch cinches up on that and then you can then take cordage up and away from the paracord or from your tarp and tie it off to whatever and that just gives you more headroom in your shelter um clove hitches are a great way to tie anything off inside of another structure like that uh, what we did there is i just tied it to a post and you may have noticed when i pulled and i'll try to demonstrate this with that because i don't have a structure but if the clove hitch is right here in front of me and it's on my arm I'll try to make this happen one thing you need to be aware of is that I can pull straight here and it'll pull, whoops, try to get on camera. I can pull straight here. And if I continue to pull on this angle, it'll stay strong for the most part. But if I pull from over here, it starts to loosen up. So that can be a problem. So if you tie, let's say you tie off a horse or critter or your, uh, your ex off to a post, I'm just joking. If you tie something off to a post and it moves around, <laughs> then then it's going to come loose it's not a secure knot so another way of securing that is to do a wrap around tie two half hitches that's why half hitches are you know god's gift to knots from my perspective and that you've got a more secure stable connection to whatever structure it is that you're tying to and i'm no i'm no pro on the clove hitch i can figure it out eventually but i think the trick you got to do the, the two loops in exactly the same pattern right yeah so i'll try twist to do that this way and then twist it the same way again to make your two loops here's how i've taught a lot of people how to do this and this is how i teach them and it seems to work okay take the right put it on top of the left take it right on top of the left then take the second loop and put it behind the first okay that's just oh well, sorry i went off camera let me do that again take the right put it over the left take the right put it over the left take that second put it behind the first behind the first meaning the way I'm looking at it, not the way you are seeing it on camera. And that's our clove itch. Uh, that, you know, that explanation, I spent a lot of time trying to learn how to teach people better. Mm -hmm. That explanation I just gave seems to work for, for most people. Uh, there's some things where you can flip hands and it just doesn't, it seems to get confusing for people. Clark Pelfrey, what's up, Clark? I use the clove hitch on my paracord hanks to keep them from unraveling. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Check it out there, buddy. There. All right. Awesome. Let's do the last one and then we'll be done, boys. Oh, bonus. Yeah, this is just another way to tie the clove hitch. Oh, okay. Bonus round. Hopefully, I can hear this video. Well, open up your ears. My ears is open. Maybe it's maybe it's those AirPods failing on you. No. Here. Don't you talk bad about my Apple AirPods. Here we go. No, I don't have audio on this one now. Oh, crap. oh good. It's not just me. <laughs> <laughs> not just Casey this time. Not just me. Okay. I forgot to hit that box again. Hang on. I think clove hitch is great for tying off lashes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Lashes. Share audio. I got to remember that button, Nick. That's my problem. Mm -hmm. and we're gonna have to do a recap here at the end of all the the knots in a nutshell, or all the hitches, I guess. Maybe this is yeah, these are hitches. Yeah, these are other than the bowling, bowling, they're mostly hitches. Here we go. Two, two, two. We. Oh, I hear you. Okay, good. Here we go. We want two. This is version two of the same knot. The clove hitch, which was number five. Actually, it's again, it's a hitch, not a knot, but they all get lumped together. And I could have had it on the post that I was at before, but I needed an excuse to come out playing the wood. So here we are. Take my working end, wrap it around the tree, take it under, and then I lay that portion that I wrapped around the tree up on top of the portion I just had before. 
wrap it around the tree again, and then stick it through the second wrap and pull that through. That is the clove hitch. It's the same one that we had before. It's just now we don't have to can take it up and over. We can tie it on a structure. Now, another use Ooh. of this, and maybe we'll get this in the discussion, is to tie this on a horizontal piece too. You can tie that on a pipe, a tree, a post, or any number of things that you set up horizontally and utilize it for that. But we'll talk about that in discussion. Thanks for joining me on this video and this discussion with knots. Hey, if you like knots and you want to see more, because I've only covered five and there's hundreds and hundreds of them, then tell the guys that you want me to come back and I will. <laughs> I want them to come back. I want them to come back. <laughs> hey, I'm always trying to get FaceTime, man. So I'll, I'll work it in there wherever I ha have to. Let's do so, it. Yeah, so that's a clove hitch, guys. And, and that's just another way of utilizing it. And again, I would highly recommend if you're actually going to use a clove hitch to then bring that tail around and tie a couple of half hitches. And that just secures it off. Uh, just another another little added bonus there. So that is just tying it off to a structure that you don't have the ability to go over the top or over the end. And you can tie it just basically anywhere. Uh, but clove hitch, is, clove hitch is really, you know, I did a, it's a really useful hitch. I did a, a, a little research today for about an hour, just top knots. That's just what I typed into Google. And just to see what a cross section of different people in different fields, whether it be uh, sailing or arborists, survivalists, bushcrafters. And the top three that seem to come up is bowline, clove hitch, and then um, sheet bin. Hmm. And, and those three just kept coming up over and over and over and over again. And so the sheet bin is not one that I actually use at all. Um, so that is, you know, interesting. And, and I think that's what I wanted to emphasize as much as anything to everybody listening and 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 uh, tuning in is that you've got to figure out what works for you. That's for sure and certain. Well, so here here's a little brain puzzler for you, but I'm pretty sure a sheet bend is a bowling where you just cut the loop. Really? If you, if you look at the shapes of the knots themselves and the actual yeah. functional mechanisms of what's going on. If you tie a bowl in and you cut the loop, I think that leaves you with a sheet bin. Really? Okay. I did not check realize that. that. Hey, I will check that out. I will check yeah. that out. That's uh, that's really interesting. It, it, and here's the thing. I, I'm doing a, I'm doing some interesting things that we're going to be uh, doing through Nature Line School with knots. And we've been spending a lot of time with knots over the last two months. And it it arguably is probably one of the, the most debatable topics among different users. But one of the things I do want to emphasize is if I were to listen to one person, it would be the climber. Those those people have to they risk their life, life. or death. Yeah, life or death. And so that's the type of person I love listening to on knots. That's the kind of person I like listening to. And I did not pretend I don't want to make sure that nothing that I've said here tonight can be taken as utilize this while you're climbing. Because it's not. <laughs> no pun intended. Ah, no. Uh, boom! You knew I would get one pun in while we were here. I, I had to get one pun that. in. What did anybody did? Heard All right. That. So, little discussion. How? What? What was your selection criteria to call these the top five for today? Two things. Uh, I utilized. I wanted to tie the ones that I know that I utilize. There, there's a certain amount of research that needs to go into this topic. And I did that, too, to see what is out there and what other people are utilizing. And then there's a certain amount of the fact that I've got gray in my beard for a reason. That's because I'm older and I've got a lot of experience doing things. And I spend a tremendous amount of time on the farm and in the woods doing things. And those five knots that I just shared, I can do a lot with those things, a whole lot. The only one that I, I kind of wanted to show was a fisherman's knot because it's probably one of the best ways to connect to pieces of line together and that's why you all got to have me back so i can do that and maybe four others some other time look at you and your truckers hitch hey listen to this casey you listening oh i'm listening so that truckers hitch you get right there 
Yeah. Do not tie that and put it on YouTube and call it a trucker's hitch. They will, they <laughs> no. will eat you alive. Yes, more ideas. I like this, Craig. See, you're on fire. Here's the thing. What, what, that, they, what that they call a, Dude, they call it some nonsense. I don't know. And I can't tell if everybody that's doing that is from Europe or not. I've got a big following in, in Britain. And it may be that they just have problems with it over there. I don't know. But I get a lot of people hating hating on me for calling that a trucker's hitch yeah there's because the trucker yes. the official trucker's hitch is something like you gotta like add extra twists and turns yes. loops and things but this is yeah that, that's hey, my, nick nick what do you call that knot that he just tied there what do you call that setup i call it a trucker's hitch because yeah. i don't know what people say that's what i've always called it i you know nick, i called it a canoe hitch, hitch when i used to do a lot of what else could we call it we could call it a an uh, overhand bite with a uh, hey. two to one tensioning mechanism. <laughs> it's a trucker's hey. hitch. I'm gonna call it. I the tied. Day. I tied thousands of Christmas trees to really sketchily small cars at Home Depot for years. He's so, a bad boy here, okay? And what I look at, and, as far and, as I know, nobody died. This might be a good point of discussion for other people watching and whatnot. Um, when I look at, at knots, I guess I look at what they do and that's, that's kind of how I remember them. I'm, I have a terrible yeah. memory for anything. And so unless I understand either how to derive back to it or the function of it, or like some particular aspect of it, it's not going to stick in my mind. Right. And so for me, the knots that I use most often, they have a particular function associated with them. And so clove hitch is one that Honestly, I don't use a lot and, and I've used it rare occasions, but for the, the overhand on a bite, right. I use that because it allows me to create a, a fixed loop in a very quick manner. I can tie this sure. fast and I can tie a bowling and a bowling right. would get you the same thing, probably better use of cordage and whatnot, but this is just so ingrained in me quick. Boom. I've got a fixed loop. Um, yeah, I think it's one of those things, man. And, and um, people just get butt hurt and that's all there is to it. Yeah. They just get really uh, hurt and their feelings hurt when the way that they've been doing something a long time is called something different. And it's just, mm -hmm. I think this is one of the things that comes out with what we do talking to people all over wherever on YouTube and on here. And so I, I think the beauty of it is what I would like to encourage all of us to do is just what I try to Play tell around. our students. <laughs> try, try, what are we, I try to tell our students, is I don't really give a crap what you call it. Just learn how to tie it and learn how to use it. I don't care if you call it the Nick. I don't care. Clark came up with Ooh. a good name for the not a trucker's hitch. There it is, son. Clark Pell for year end. What is it? Ain't got a ratchet strap hitch. Yep. I got it. Yes, sir. Hell yeah. yeah. I mean, well, it's interesting that knots cause such controversy, but I think it's a really, it's, it's an important thing in, in human psychology that if people get this upset about knots, and, and your top five doesn't match my top five. It's right. it's fun to have a discussion about why, as opposed exactly. to just being like, you're wrong. Well, you did it wrong. You did that. That's not what that is. Instead of having a logical discussion of like, hey, you know, I think this is how it's supposed to be done. Or can you tie it this way instead? Or maybe that's, you know, maybe that's this name as opposed to trucker's hitch. But people don't have those. It, it, it's more of a contradictory, like accusation right out of the gate. And that's sure. about knots. Now imagine trying to discuss politics or like some actual important topic with somebody in it. It's right. Be world is or bushcraft or whatever. Right <laughs> Everybody's all buttered yeah, I mean, about everything. For years, I called that what what Casey tied there the trucker's hitch. I called it the canoeman's hitch just because that's what I used it for. Mm -hmm. I was tying down kayaks and canoes for years, and I was just if, if if I was working for people or working with people, I'd say just put a canoeman's knot on the end of it. And, and they know what we're talking about. We're going to have to rewatch this video, Craig, because you have so many good ideas in here. We could make a YouTube video right now called The Canoeman's Hitch. And then you tie that and it's just going to go viral. Like, hey, viral. Canoeman's Hitch. Why did you just make that up? Hey, dude, I'm telling hey, you, I, hey. I will do that. I will, I will do not that. experts. Called Not Not. What is this? Hey, listen to this. You all will like this and everybody listening because some of the people that are watching know that I've got this. I've got this lab coat, like a professor's lab coat. It's got nature yes. lines go on it and it's got professor on it. Yes. And I call, listen to this. I call myself the naughty professor 
Oh my gosh. So I'm just telling you right now, I will put on that and I will tie the five stupidest knots that I can come up with with the dumbest names. If y'all help me promote it. But see, that's the problem. You I, have to pretend like you're being real. That automatically. Oh, I will. Dirty. Listen to me, son. I'm the naughty professor. I can do it. Don't mess with uh, me. Oh, I ain't going to knock you up. Oh, All right. Come well, in. Come I don't see any questions or anything flowing in here. You got anything else you want to wrap I, up, Craig? No, man. I really, I always appreciate you guys having me on. This is a lot of fun. I really enjoy uh, doing this stuff with you all. And hey, in all seriousness, this is one of those things that could just go on and on forever. If you'd like to do another one, maybe in a month, have me back and I'll do five more. Uh, I've got a fantastic yeah. knot to teach people how to tie their shoes so they never uncome, they never come untied again. Oh, man. My wife needs that. There's something uh, about women's shoelaces that apparently just don't tie the same way men's do. I got the fix. Have me back in a, in a month or so. <laughs> we call it how to tie your shoes. <laughs> That's cool. all I'm talking about. Well, hopefully everybody gets out and practices. Uh, everybody that watches this has some rope with them and uh, learn these. They're good. They're valuable. They're base skills. And uh, yeah, we might we might do some more. Just bring Craig back on and, and run through our our top five. My top five, Casey's top five, Dustin's top five. And there you go. I know three. And watch him squirm as he's like, oh, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, man. That's I, I, only, I only know three knots, so you're good. I, I All right. Know. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week in the next one. And, yeah, have fun. Thanks, Craig, for coming on. All right, man. Enjoy it. Thanks, Nick. Cool. If you thanks, want to see you. Craig, you too, man. Got a YouTube channel with all the information as well. So see you guys later. Y'all yeah. be safe. See ya.